Hey everybody, welcome to Infinite Nerd Prompts. I'm your host for the day, the <laughs> loving Royal Flush. We have with us uh, your favorite squid, Mr. Nerdy Cephalopod himself. Hi everyone. Following that, we have Ocean Crest. Hello. Our resident angry person. <laughs> <laughs> the lovely, the lovely Panquakes. Hiya. <laughs> And le- last but not least, good old Tricky Dick Peaches. Oh dear God, hello. All right, to start things off today, we have Mr. Nerdy Cephalopod himself and Tricky Dick helping me read my submission. Let's get right into it. Why is it blue? Is it not supposed to be blue? I'm pretty sure its color isn't that important. At least this doesn't say it matters. What do you mean? says right there it should be turquoise uh, well turquoise is a shade of blue right mm, i mean i guess so but i still say that's pr- pretty much just blue look i made it following all the instructions per the alchemical guide it will work i'm not an idiot you know now are you gonna pay me or do we need to get messy The alchemist shakes a coat pocket, causing the slightest sound of glass tinkling together. Nah, nah, mate. You don't gotta do nothing like that. Look after the score, you'll get your money. Yeah? That was the deal. I don't know about that now. I remember it being before you go in there. What do you mean, you scummy, louse bastard? It was after. Yeah, but now that you've mentioned it, I don't know how I feel about the color of the potion there. You might not make it back out if it wears off. You said it was fine. Now it's not. Look, I'll take the bloody thing and if it kills me, you get nothing. If it doesn't and I get the loot, then you get paid. That's how this is going to go, mate. No other way about it. Well, you're suddenly a lot less concerned about a slightly less than turquoise potion now, aren't you? All right, seems square with me. Have at it. The thief drinks down the potion in one long gulp and then moans as his body begins to change shape, his features tilting towards that of one of the guards in the treasury room. (sighs) Well, how's it look then? Am I a pass for one of thems? Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, you're good there, boyo. If I didn't know it was you, I'd have think I was uh, busted by the guards. Good luck down there, mate. See ya when you get back. The thief slinks off, his new head held high. Shit, that thing made him look green. I mean, maybe they won't notice. If it's dark, it might work. Yeah, hells, I'm not getting paid now, am I? All right, well, hopefully things go well for our thief friend there. What's uh, what's the nerdy cephalopod going to get himself into next? And coming up, we have our submission by our very own Ocean Crest, read by our dear Panquakes. Bright blue eyes glowed from the corner of a pitch black room. An old man sat as the light from his eyes faded. He fumbled quickly through his bag, throwing empty vials across his empty workshop until he found his last potion. He blinked and his eyes dimmed from a wonderful blue until they both became milky white. His aged hands pulled the cork from his final vial of violet vision, and he drank the sweet tonic as quickly as he could. Suddenly the room lit up for him, though he stood alone in the dark. He stumbled over a pile of books as he made his way to the alchemy bench. Beholder's tears, he started to mumble. A hawk's feather, and he looked to an empty jar. No more Gorgon eyes. He dejectedly turned to his writing desk and started jotting down the notes to experiments with potions. Three beholder's tears, the feather of a hawk, and two Gorgon eyes. These are the ingredients needed for a potion of true sight for the blind. Though the potion will wear off after an hour, and it is a benefit for our friends without vision, 
This potion will grow the vision of anyone who is not blind. There is no cure for the adverse effects. He let out a sigh and looked at the painting that hung on his wall. A small child with milky white eyes next to a much younger version of himself. This potion is dedicated to my son and any others that may seek stories and knowledge. Randolph Kilward. Well, hopefully things work out for old Randolph there. And coming up, we have our submission by our very own Panquakes, read by Ocean Crest. You said this was a potion of dreams? That's right. This drought will be sure to give you plenty of dreams. An exchange of coin was made, and as they left, the witch smiled. Well, naturally, I couldn't tell them it was made of ayahuasca, belladonna, and batel. There will certainly be dreams, all right. But who knows what horrors your little mind will come up with. After all, nightmares need to be fed, too. Well, coming up next, we have that flippin' squid nerdy cephalopod. Let's get to it. It is midday, and the sounds of a roaring crowd can be heard. Excitement and bloodlust fill the air. Everyone is pumped for the big event. Everyone. Except for Lil Boogie Woogie. He has to fight the champ tonight. The Sultan of Slams. The driver with the pile driver. Scorn of all that value the ability to walk ever again. Rothgar. Lil Boogie is just a simple and tiny little goblin. How is one of such a tiny stature supposed to fight one of such girth and height? Lil Boogie has heard a rumor of an amazing potions dealer that sells the most exotic of potions and hopefully he just might have the potion that will help Boogie to survive the calamity that is Rothgar. Surprisingly, it was super easy, barely an inconvenience to find said potion seller, for he was right in the middle of town showing off his wares. I have everything here. Everything. I got one that will make you change into any race. This one will make you irresistible to the opposite sex. Hell. This one will give you polka dots. So come on up. Don't be scared and find the potion that meets your needs. Boogie steps forward with a sparkle and glint in his eyes. Please, master. I know something that will make me large and wild and able to take the blows in the most of foes. The potion seller takes a look at little Boogie, turns around and quickly grabs a potion from himself. Why, son, this is what you need. This is my patented. Little Boogie throws down a gold and grabs the potion, thanks the seller, and rushes for his match. In this corner, we have the Sultan of Slams, the driver with the power driver scorn of all that value the ability to walk ever again. Rothgo! And over here we have Little Boogie. Yay. With all the courage that Little Boogie can muster, he chugs his potion and throws the bottle to the side. And the crowd, refs, announcers, and Rothgar watch as Little Boogie does indeed become large and wide. Except he becomes a goblin gelatinous cube. The match goes without a hitch, and Boogie is able to take all of Rothgar's blows. But unfortunately... Rothgar has taken a liking to the new cubified boogie and has kept him on in his new training bag. So please remember, always let your potion seller finish his explanation on what you will be receiving. Well, it sounds like Boogie's got himself into a sticky situation. Well, that was just wonderful. Now, we have our last reader. We got Tricky Dick Peaches. Let's see what he has on his mind. Potion I choose is a potion that time travels you back to medieval England amid the surge of the bubonic plague. Your clothes don't travel with you, but you're always dressed in time-appropriate garb. To break the effects of the potion, you have to find the nearest royal, preferably a duke or higher. Rip off your clothes, shake your junk at them, while reciting the lyrics to the bare naked lady's song, One Week. The effects of the spell don't end if you don't finish the whole 2 minutes and 55 seconds of the song. Failing to do so puts you in a time loop. If successful, you wake up at George Clooney's locked pool house in L.A. with the need to shit like never before. There are only two bathrooms in the pool house you find yourself in. One of the floors of the nearest bathroom is covered in rat traps, which is why it's locked from the outside. You can't step over them without stepping on at least a dozen of them. The other bathroom is in the basement. 
The basement is no normal basement, though. The floor is a giant litter box. A litter box filled with sand from the nearest beaches. You know this because of the bent sign in the corner that reads Venice on it. There's likely broken glass and used syringes in it. Before you make your decision, you feel the vibration and the ne near familiar ring of the tone in your, of your cell phone coming from your lower intestine. Well, that sure was something. Um, yeah. This has been Infinite Nerd Prompts. Join us next week when we, uh, when we record our next session. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And ring that notification bell in case you want to hear what comes up next. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.